what you are looking at is a double module. Now normally I build something like this. All right, this will be a module. And this is a bandpass filter for 80 meters. It's centered on 3.5 megahertz. Okay? So if you want to build a radio that's like a direct conversion, uh, you'll notice a lot of the circuits for 80 meters, a direct conversion, will have something like this. Uh, there are two T50-2 toroid coils, approximately uh, 34 turns. All right. Uh, going in from the antenna, there will be another winding into the toroid coils. Uh, you could have anywhere from four to eight turns. It's up to you. What, how much, what kind of, what kind of signals do you want to pick up? Weak ones or strong ones? So if they're weak and you're trying to DX, uh, you might want eight turns coming off the antenna. Now, from to the top of the toroid, the bottom of the toroid, the main winding goes to ground. The top of the toroid, uh, you might run a wire off if you just want a whip antenna. So the RF com comes in here, comes in on this end, comes in on this terminal, goes through eight turns of wire to ground. And that energizes or, uh, let's see, stimulates this coil, which has a varactor across it. Now, on these fixed bandpass filters, you'll see those trimmer caps. See those two pink trimmer caps? Well, in my case, I use two varactor diodes in here. Okay, here's one and here's another one. And they're M V A M 109s. And they're like 300 picofarads. So that allows me to tune the bandpass input of this, uh, we'll call it a converter circuit. We'll call it a, um, um, a, a, it's a dual conversion radio. This is the first converter or conversion or a mixer. You can call it a mixer, you can call it a converter. But basically, the signal will come in here, let's say an 80 meter uh, signal, uh, actually lower than 80 meters, uh, CHU Canada, 3.33 megahertz, uh, mega cycles for you old guys. And that gets converted, when, when you want to pick that up, you, you take the signal of 2.67 off the output, okay? What this does is it takes a band of frequencies and converts them down in frequency. Okay, so 3.33 becomes 2.67. Right? I'll explain that in a while. You just that's I'm just trying to get to the point where I'll un let you understand that this front end is tunable with the varactor diodes from 40 meters to 80 meters. Okay, it's actually even wider, but you can you can actually turn this knob. Is it in the yeah? Turn this knob. Adjust the voltage to the varactor. It changes the resonant frequency of these two toroid coils. The input signal comes in. It gets peaked up. It gets transferred over by a 15 picofarad capacitor to the other coil. That coil gets excited. That has 11 turns or 8 turns out. That goes over to the the, uh, the product detector. Um, you call it a converter. You can call this to, this any 602. You can call it many different names. Okay, so. Two T50-2s make up the, the uh, bandpass um, filter, but it's, it's tunable to a, sp a specific frequency. So it's better than a bandpass. You know, this is a bandpass. This one's stuck at uh, 3.5 megahertz. This, this is a very tough uh, video to do without any editing. All right, so now we turn this... Uh, we we turn we put our receiver output over here our receiver input over here on this side and we set it to 2.67 megahertz and we add an antenna over here we put a battery on here to get the circuit working we turn this knob and it'll peak up at 2.67 megahertz all right but we're really receiving 3.33 megahertz and that's the trick of a dual conversion you convert the frequency in this case down all right now so now you have the frequency converted once all right on this board any 602 the any 602 also has a uh, a preamp in here so when this rf circuitry feeds into here there's 18 dbs of gain 
So you don't need a transistor out here or a, a FET out here. Now you could put one out there and put a gain control on it. Okay, but I'm just I'm just giving you the preview of what this circuit does. Okay, and telling you what the parts are. You know, two toroids, uh, T50-2s, 34 turns each, uh, which will, you, with the varactor diodes, which are 300 picofarads, will give you a range of between 80 meters and 40 meters. Remember, as the, uh, the frequency goes up, the meters go down. Okay, so let's just say 80 meters is around 3 megacycles, or 3.5 megacycles, and 40 meters is 7 megacycles. So this circuit can tune both. Now, over here, on, on our NE602, there's a 6 megahertz crystal. And that incoming signal of CHU Canada 3.33 goes into the mixer, mixes with the 6 megahertz, and it comes out as 2.67 megacycles. All right, we're down converting. Now, if you were to do uh, 40 meters, we readjust this and we change this crystal to a 9 megahertz crystal. And we will get the you will get um, uh, one of the 40 meter signals out of here at a downed uh, volt a down voltage a down frequency. Okay, this is based on a Collins R R R388. Okay, dual conversion. I just I just wanted to I wanted to build this circuit. Okay, this is how I work. Actually, think about it, build it, get it to work. All right. But right now, it's got a 6 megahertz crystal in here. Uh, this NE602 has a, um, a uh, R amplifier. That's why we don't have to have any out here. Makes it very simple. And an NE602, there's circuitry. They show you how to put a crystal in here. All right. Now, you want the crystal to be approximately 2 megahertz above the frequency range you want to get. Approximately. So, if you want 80 meters, which is, say, three megacycles or let's say 3.5 megacycles so we're using a six megahertz crystal you could use like the Collins uses a, a 5.7 megahertz crystal I I chose to use a six because it's an easier crystal to, to find so the output over here is all the frequencies of 40 meters and I know it's at first you're gonna say what okay 40 meters or 80 meters comes in over here all right which will say it's 3.5 megahertz to say 4 megahertz. But they come out of here at different frequencies. It's, it's a downed uh, frequency range. It's been downed. Now, you want to do that because this range of frequencies that comes out of here is in a band on the, on the, in the circuitry that's not used by anything. Okay? So even if you were working um, a 40 meter band, with a 9 megahertz crystal, all the frequencies that are getting converted down fall in a band or in a frequencies that aren't used. So you're going to have less interference if something could get in through the radio through the antenna. Okay, a very strong signal would come in through the antenna, get in this circuit, and make you nuts. Okay, now I tried putting larger crystals in here, like a 10 megahertz crystal, and it sort of worked. But what happens is, the frequency range of your next oscillator mixer has to be much wider. And the wider the frequency to range, the more of a capacitance you're going to have for the lower end, the more likely the whole circuit's going to drip. So if you look at the Collins circuitry, again, it's a Collins R388. They broke it down into little bands. And the second, the first, the first uh, converter or circuitry, uses a fixed crystal so let's just say that doesn't drift at all it does drift a little crystals always drift a little now the next band you keep the frequency range in the same range on the next the next oscillator okay it stays in the same range but the dial flips and is recalibrated it's very slick the way they do it but i just wanted to uh, go give you a quick over, uh, oversight of what I'm actually working on. And uh, the resistors for these Varactor diodes are 470Ks. Okay? And they go to uh, the center tap of this uh, variable resistor. So when you turn this knob, the voltage varies across the, the Varactors 
and then it's coupled these reactors are coupled to the coil through 0.1 microfarad capacitors the diode is not directly across the coil okay it uses a series capacitor and that's it's it's slick this has so many different features right here in this circuit it took lots of experiments to decide what I wanted to use and I had done a direct conversion radios okay and here's one of the modules I have the I have the 455 IF modules and uh, I started saying well let me let me do a dual conversion so this is basically the dual conversion radio right here this takes a band any band you put in here if you change the crystal you take an 80 meter band and it down converts the entire band down in frequency all right and uh, it's very slick so now the next oscillator has to be able to uh, tune the circuitry between let's just say uh, to I, I actually had the frequency list of what this thing would actually do uh, let me look through my notes here real quick okay the next oscillator that this goes to tunes between 2.255 megahertz to 3.255 megahertz okay and that gets the entire band for 80 meters but i just wanted to show you that uh, if you get into any kind of circuitry you might want to wind some toroid coils and i have a, a, i show how to make the tool to to wind these all right you get into that then this this is also has a project of using varactor diodes then it's got to get into crystal oscillator with an ne602 all right and then you tie the two circuits together now in order to test this i run this output here over to the aerial of my dx390 and i know that chu canada at 3.33 megahertz will come out of this circuit with the six megahertz crystal at 2.67 megahertz and I, I could i could i could hook that up for you but it's very noisy because right behind this camera is uh my chair and then my computer and anytime i run the computer it knocks out all my radios but i just wanted to show you this is what i'm working on and i told you i built everything on perfboard and i've had people make comments ah why don't you use a circuit board it's not that hard to make when you work with rf okay there's things you can do uh without going uh underneath like in other words the wires for the um, secondary winding on the coil can go over the top and you can put them in the spot where they they go instead of running them along the bottom along other traces which you mix you cause problems okay uh you could also design it different but by the time you get it all done designing it you're, you're going to keep making changes see by Building this perf board, I'm able to change what I want to do. Like originally, uh, my modules were this big, or actually as big as this board. Now this board is a, a recycled module board, okay? And uh, uh, one guy complained, I said, okay, too many times. Well, three more okays for you, okay, 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 you freaking troll, okay? Uh, you, you've been, you've been, you've been uh, silenced? No, what would they call it? Muted you've been muted there's people that like to pick on the way i talk okay don't watch my videos okay you're not going to build the circuits i built you don't have the brains you know like i said i check you out as soon as you you say something to me i click on your name and no videos so it's very easy to pick on someone else the way they talk okay or their knowledge base all right it's very easy to do when you're not showing your cards okay but i just wanted to show you this circuit uh you know it's 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 been a while in the making and even deciding how many turns uh going into the coil from the antenna i use eight now i used to use four now i use eight there's a little bit more signal and this is very sharply tuned when you tune this you can actually tune in a, a specific frequency it's very sharp okay and uh, i i chose to come off this secondary coil with eight turns into the ne602 i was coming off the top of the coil with a uh say a 0.01 or 100 picofarad uh the circuit's much sharper 
tune wise tuning wise if you come off this coil with some turns of wire to the ne602 see i built stuff just to see how the circuit works what improvements i can make why why did collins do something a certain way see you can you can change the frequency of this crystal and and have it tune a wider range but then your your secondary oscillator has to tune a wide range and has to be very stable and uh you know i get the huff and puff i get away with a lot but i'm sticking with the design that collins use uh you want any frequency that comes out off this board to fall between 2.255 megahertz and 3.255 yeah you by changing the crystal you can change that range there's many many uh experiments you can make with this board now this board runs on a nine volt battery okay very simple i hope the nine volt battery up ground in the antenna and out of here comes a complete band that's been uh, scaled uh they used to sell uh, cable tv converters like that uh you hook it up to the your cable tv company and then it would it would downshift um frequencies you couldn't get and bring them down into regular channels so you flip a switch on your tv set or on on this converter and it would down convert all these different channels uh into uhf and that's the, it was real cheap you instead of paying uh, 120 dollars for a box uh you paid 35 for one of these down converters and uh you put your tv on uh, uhf and you flip the switch and all those high frequency si signals get down shifted into your uhf band and there ones where some made to shift down uh you could set it for in between frequencies on vhf this is an old idea okay but i never built one of these circuits and the devil is in the detail okay i got there's I, i've seen messages of, oh all you got to do is get an any 602 and yeah that's easy to say that actually do it actually find out why the crystal for each band is about two mega cycles above the frequencies you want you don't want it too too high above because then the the downshifted frequencies will end up in the am broadcast band and if you build this circuit and you do that your local am broadcast bands if they're close they can come right through the radio and you're like this is supposed to be a dual conversion radio yeah well you you actually you done you, you did you did yourself in i think that's it all right that's it